All right, you ready for this? Number 10. Oh my, two inequality signs. This is that three-headed monster where you got three sides. I'm going to kind of divide it up because the key thing to remember is we need to do the same thing to all three sides. So I'm going to pretend that don't pretend that, that was stupid. Pretend that this thing doesn't even exist. What would you do to both sides? Well, you'd subtract 8 to both sides. You just got to make sure we do it to all three sides. So over here, the sign stays the same. You have negative 11. Over here, you have negative 15. This is an and problem because our, my mystery number x has to be greater than negative 15 and less than negative 11. So negative 15 is a key number. 14, 13, 12. Negative 11 is a key number. That one's going to be colored in, though. And I want all the numbers in between because my mystery number has to be greater and less. Uh, interval notation, my far left number is negative 15. My far right number is negative 11. Negative 15 is open circle. Negative 11 closed. Number 11. I see the word or, so automatically in my head I'm thinking, okay, the graph's going to look like that if I do it correct. Solve each problem separately. Y is greater than 1 or... y is less than negative 3. So we'll graph each of them separately. Let's see, 1 could be right here, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative put negative 3 there. Uh, they both are open circles. y is greater than 1 looks like that. y is less than negative 3 looks like that. Interval notation. Well, there's two different intervals. So I get this interval, treat them separately. Or problems, you just basically do two problems in one. You go from negative infinity to negative 3. The second interval, you go from 1 to infinity. 12, here we go. What do you notice different about this one? Well, it's absolute value. Any absolute value problem means we're going to have to account for the positive and for the negative. Here's how we do that. One problem is going to stay the exact same. One problem is going to change where the sign flips and we make the 17 negative. Absolute value, you have to accommodate for the positive and the negative options and we flip our sign the second time we write it. So now we have two separate guys to solve. 4x is less than or equal to 8. x is less than or equal to 2. And over here, negative 17 minus 9 is negative 26. Divide by 4 x is greater than or equal to, and this is actually negative 6.5. Now, take each of them, graph them separately. So 2, I'm graphing this one right here. 2 could be right, now nah, let's make it, uh, let's make it over here. And I want x is less than 2. At the same time, you got, let's see, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative, negative 6.5 is right there. 
and I want it to be bigger than negative 6.5. So am I dealing with an and problem or an or problem? This is an and problem. All and problems look the same. I have the Pac-Mans chasing each other with x in the middle. My small number over here. My big number here. Interval notation. Negative 6.5. Move along. 13. See the bars again. Okay, means I got a split. Maybe try this one on your own, see if you get the same thing. 2x minus 2, greater than 5. 2x minus 2, less than negative 5. Solve each separately. Go ahead and do this on your own. Come back, hit pause, maybe, see if you get the same thing. Uh, fractions? The heck, who made this review? 7 over 2 is the same as 3 and a half. Plus 2, plus 2. 2x two is less than negative 3. Uh, x is less than 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. So, Got two separate things that I graph. Let's start with, let's see, let's call this zero. One, two, three. Three and a half would be right there. And x is greater than three and a half. Negative one and a half is right there. One and a half, and x is less than that. So am I dealing with an or or an and problem? I am dealing with an or. So really, x is less than negative one and a half, or x is greater than three and a half. It can't be, you can't solve both at the same time. It's an or. Two different intervals. So that means I'm going to have two different intervals of notation negative infinity to negative one and a half, three and a half, to infinity. All right. Uh, 14. We've switched gears here. This is an equal sign now. And then... Uh, Remember your 4s is solo, so we're going to get the absolute value by itself. Then we'll split it into two different problems. We'll solve, and then we'll make sure. So here we go. Solo is the absolute value bars by itself. Yes. I go ahead and split it into two problems now. 4x plus 3 equals 15. Let's zoom in a little bit. And 4x plus 3 equals negative 15. Solve each separately. These should be pretty simple for you. I'm in my third S right now, solve. So I'm just solving equations like we know how to do. 4x equals 12. So x is equal to 3, subtract 3, subtract 3, 4x is equal to negative 18, divide by 4, so x is equal to negative 18 divided by 4, uh, it's actually negative 4 and a half. Graphing this, when x is equal to 3, that just means it can be 3 and nothing else. There's no arrows, it can be anything else. Uh, and then go over that's zero, one, two, negative four and a half, it can also be that. The last S is sure, so real quick, let's see. Four times three is twelve plus three, absolute value fifteen is fifteen. Good. 
and then negative 4 and a half, 4 times negative 4 and a half is negative 18, negative 18 plus 3 is negative 15, absolute value of negative 15 is 15. Cool. The last one. Keep in mind my four S's. I'll keep those from the other side of the screen. Solo. So I need to get these absolute value bars by itself. Right now there's a three on the left side, so I'm going to get rid of that. So then I just have two absolute value of x is equal to eight divided by two. I'm still just trying to get it solo. Absolute value of x is equal to four. Notice I haven't done anything with the bars yet. Then, once it's solo, then I split it. One for the positive, one for the negative. Solve. Well, not really much to solve here. I already solved for you, so that's good. We can double check our answer. Uh, two times four is eight, plus three, 11, good. Two times four is eight, yep, they both work. So you got negative four, and four are your answers here.